What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero. Welcome back to Let's Play 999 The Line. In the last episode, a lot went down. A lot went down regarding the previous Nonary game and how that's impacting the dynamic with everybody going on right now. Ace has this gun, Lotus is in trouble, Santa has been sucker punched and is probably plotting some sort of revenge. And now, Jinpei is laying it down how Ace actually ended up killing all of his, well, all four, or the remaining of the four, um, I don't know, big shots in Cradle Pharmaceuticals, and <clears throat> sorry, it's been a while since my voice was the limiting factor on my recording ability, but I'm gonna do the best I can. And left off last episode when we were going to talk about Musashiro's death, which I don't think has actually been discussed up until this point, so I'm really curious to see just how that would have happened. It appeared that it was the hatchet or axe that was used to kill Musashiro, and to be honest, at any point where Ace's whereabouts were unaccounted for, such a thing could have happened, but I doubt they're going to leave it at that, right? First of all, Ace would have to know that Musashiro was on the boat. And he may have inferred, right, that given Kubota was there, that Musashiro might be as well, but he had to have encountered Musashiro first. And then afterwards, devise some means of, well, killing him, right? And up until this point, we hadn't, I haven't at least seen a point where Musashiro was obvious, right? All I can think of is if Ace went ahead or traver traversed somewhere that the rest of the crew hadn't been um, and got to Musashiro first, right? like in the captain's quarters for example or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I think that maybe putting the Zero Bracelet on him and dressing him up like the captain of the ship in might have uh, and obviously with the prosopagnosia, he couldn't recognize Musashiro's face, might have led him to actually kill him thinking he was Zero, but I don't know. I don't know, Let, let's see. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. Oh, does that indicate he knew where... Okay, so yeah, this is kind of what I was speculating. I didn't know the specific time frame, but he somehow got to the captain's quarters before everyone else. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Yeah, that's a fair point. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle. Assuming they're the same, but presumably they are. Which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you can enter the captain's quarters. Musashiro was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took. Okay, so he kind of jumped over the whole part. Why was Musashiro there in the first place? Was Musashiro like drugged up or something like that? Like Nijisaki, etc. Then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. I also think they need to kind of give a little bit of an explanation as to why Ace would want to go ahead, right? It's not like Ace for every single room at each opportunity he had the, you know, he could go ahead of the crew. Um, he was taking those opportunities, right? So for this one particular time, he was eager to get ahead of the everybody else solving the various puzzles and then return like nothing happened, right? <clears throat> I don't recall any other times where he's done that. Maybe staying behind where the rest of the crew went through the different doors in the infirmary. Was it the infirmary? Or no, it was the um, like the hospital room or whatever. Maybe you could see that as something similar, right? But 
But otherwise, I feel like I need an explanation for why Ace was so eager to get to the captain's quarters specifically before everyone else was. And I feel like that implies that he knew Musashiro was there or someone was there, whether that be Zero or, you know, someone else. And he already had determined that he wanted to do something in that room specifically. And the question then is also, if Musashiro was there, was he conscious? Was he awake? If not, and there was just an axe lying next to him, wouldn't that wouldn't that ring some bells, right? If you're Ace, obviously you're gonna want to kill these people that might reveal your past, etc. But it's not like, but like you walk into a room, and I don't know, there's like a a chair waiting for you at a table with a meal all prepped and nice and you don't see anyone there, you're gonna think you're supposed to eat it. And if you're skeptical of whoever might have prepared that meal, you're gonna think twice about whether or not you actually wanna eat it even if it's screaming at you to eat it, right? And similarly, in a game like this, the Nonary game, where you're very suspect of Zero's intentions, especially given your own history with the Nonary project, right? And you see somebody that you want to kill with an axe just laying right next to them and we have no in we have no history of a struggle taking place at least in junpei's recount of the event or from what i remember of the investigation of the captain's quarters you've got to wonder if someone was just sitting there like a sitting duck and had an axe next to them and they were clearly a target you wanted to kill and you were clearly someone who could get ahead of the rest of the crew you would want to think twice about just playing into zero's hands in that regard so I'm not 100% sure I'm buying the, the, I don't know, surrounding context of the event, but, but nevertheless, hopefully we get that explanation. There was something I want to speak with you about, Junpei. Um, could you come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper. The one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. Why would he want to do that? It wasn't a very good plan. It had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. Why would he want to do that, though? Because, I mean, from the perspective of everyone else, he was lent the pocket watch, and that's its last whereabouts. And if it suddenly shows up on Junpei, that's a little bit concerning, right? How did it get there? And it would have revealed, you know, that Ace was up to some trickery, right? I feel like in order to actually relieve that suspicion, he would have had to given it back in a reasonable time, or something like that, or have lost it at some point, or I don't know, some, something like that. There's not a lot of ways to get around. You were the one with the pocket watch at the time before we entered the captain's quarters. And to be getting rid of it in such a manner. Like, when we needed it, I forget how we actually found the pocket watch at the time. But what was it like, oh, this pocket watch I lent Ace is suddenly in my jacket. There's, like, huh? You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace. That was the only thing Junpei hadn't been able to figure out. Musashiro's murder is the only one I don't understand. Obviously did it, but why? Because of this. Slowly, Ace reached down and pulled something out of his pocket. It was a folded piece of paper. Ah, so, so this is the the paper with the what is it? It's like truth is dead. Truth is dead. Something. Just read it. Junpei took it and opened it. Let's see. 
This was what it said. Bangle number one. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. Oh, is this what was in the safe? The first is to win the notary. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. This is different. I don't think we've heard of this before. I've prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. <laughs> Simply look into the camera and repent. So he would rather kill other people to get out than, you know, repent. Somebody's got to call up the Phantom Thieves. <laughs> Once you've confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. So that's how he knew that someone was there. I wonder where did he get this note? Perhaps he will confess with you. Interesting. So that's how he knew it was probably one of those four. Given he had seen the ninth man, he figured it was either Nijisaki or Musashiro, and then could plan accordingly. So this fills in some of those gaps I was mentioning earlier, right? Why would Ace specifically be interested in getting to the captain's quarters before everyone else? There's potentially a witness who clearly knows of his past, gives him motivation to get there. Whoever they are, they're probably worth killing from Ace's perspective, and so forth. So, okay, th thank you 999 for filling that in. The decision is yours, do as you please. Zero. Now the question is, where did he get this paper, right? Was it just given to him at the beginning of the game? I don't think so, because, well, well, was that one paper we saw that listed the four names and talking about number two bracelet having a grudge against him or whatever? Um, was that in the safe? I think it was. So maybe this was just given to him at the very beginning of the game. And almost on cue, the game answers. When I awoke in that room on D deck, I found that in my pocket. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning, then? Musashiro, I mean? Exactly. I only, know Musa or I only knew Musashiro was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. And this also explains why, you know, there was some motive that was greater to him than, you know, playing into Zero's hand, and that was, namely, making sure there wasn't a witness to, um, you know, tell about Ace's past. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. But yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. Ace had confessed everything. What energy he had left with him, with the truth. 
What energy he had left him with the truth. Hmm? And he sagged on his knees. Although he had confessed, his sins were not forgiven. If only... If only he had done that on video. <laughs> In the captain's quarters. Junpei felt revulsion for the pathetic man on the floor near his feet. What a different dynamic than the other timeline with the incinerator, right? Where Ace is completely in power, and then you have this, you know, vengeance from Snake leading to the burning of the both of them and these multiple shots fired and, and everything. What a completely turned around dynamic. But in among the revulsion was a hint of pity. After all, Ace had not been the only person who murdered those three men. Junpei spoke quietly. Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes, so it would seem. I was little more than a puppet, in many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. Yeah, I think, I think that one you just kind of have to chalk up to human emotions, right? Because, like I was mentioning with my probably oddly timed meal analogy, Ace definitely was being manipulated, and I feel like it would have been incredibly clear. However, there's a lot of risk involved in calling the bluff, right? When you understand the gravity of the Nonary game, when you call the bluff on somebody who's telling you, you know, there's someone out who potentially might want to kill you, or there's a way that I can save you, and it's either winning this game or this, and you assume that, well, the opposite means not being saved, that there isn't any other solution, right? I, um... I can't blame him for taking it as seriously or betting on, even if he's falling into a trap, he has to go by what he can more confidently say will lead to his own sa or like salvation, right? So, but yes, yes, this was a trap. <laughs> it was Zero's trap, and I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Ah. Yeah. By manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That is why this nonary game happened. Na <laughs> so Santa. I was gonna say he's gonna be like so Santa. Am I right, Santa? Junpei looked over at Santa. As Junpei spoke, he stood up. His legs still shaky. Ah, uh, koto da? Shiranai na. Huh? What the heck are you talking about? I don't know any. Obokete mo mudada, Santa. Iya. Kurashiki aoi. Ooh, calls about by name. Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Or should I say, Kurashiki Aoi. Actually, I guess I should call you Kurashiki Aoi, huh? Seven's face was sad as he spoke. My memory came back to me, kid. You're Kurashiki Aoi. No doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room, talking to you. But hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? Hmm, <laughs> after all, the person who planned the Nonary game this time around was Zero. Zero? 
And zero is you. So, Kyoko Matanoka. Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? And that look, he's given up on the whole act. Sata's smile was sarcastic, and something else. Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? So. Yeah, you got me. I'm Kurashiki Aoi. I was one of the kids in the Nonari game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing. No, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Interesting. Number one, I ain't zero. He's not zero. Is this gonna go along with the whole... His sister has been revived somehow through the morphogenic field of the memories and Alice and is the one actually exacting revenge, or...? <gasps> what? Wait, what? Huh. Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. There's a chance, of course, that Zero could still be someone other than, you know, someone who's in the game, and there's some means of communicating, like a morphogenetic field or something like that. Hmm. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Yeah, I feel like that's where it's gonna go. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? I'm sure he's gonna be like, I don't know. I simply receive the orders, as in like, morphogenetic field, you know, somebody's transmitting them, Zero, and, somebody, and Santa is clearly receiving them. And there's some means of understanding and trust between the two of them, but he may not even know who they are. <laughs> Calm down there, Junpei. Didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, Junpei you just said... All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. I'm intrigued to hear what the other rationale may be. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. Is it to also continue the experiment, per se? There's another reason you guys were playing the Nonary game. To save someone. Is that going to be Akane? Save? Someone? Right. Ah, uh, darn. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. What the heck are you talking about? Kurashiki Akane died nine years ago in this room. I was there, I saw... Suddenly, Seven froze. His eyes went as wide as dinner plates, and he spun around toward June. Junpei followed his gaze. <coughs> what? Wait, she was gone? She was gone? Huh? Hold up a minute! <laughs> Where did June go? Has she always been some sort of, like, projection or something? Where June had been, there was nothing. <laughs> What the heck? Where's... Where is she? Where's Kuroshiki Akane? Seven began to mumble to himself, a strange series of words strung together as if his mind wasn't functioning properly. His face was twisted with effort, as though he were struggling with something they couldn't see. He gritted his teeth and pressed his hands against the sides of his head. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like all the analogies, 
right? That have been given throughout the game. Like Lotus talking about the monitor versus the computer and the signal and its display um, being used for kind of like a the display or perception of something being the reality of that thing. Um, or, you know, a lot can be going on behind what's actually up front and visible, right? Similarly, the analogies from Clover with like the sock and the ship of Odysseus. I think that was it. I don't know. Ship of Theseus. I, I don't know <laughs> which, which, or whose ship it was. But the idea of reconstructing something from its parts one by one and it's, it's slowly becoming something else, right? And you've got to wonder how all of this, it probably all pertains to June, in my opinion. Regardless, Seven <laughs> says, my head, my head, it feels like it's going to pop. Seven? Seven, what the heck is going on? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode. From somewhere far away, they all heard a deep, heavy noise. It sounded like a tremendous wheel slowly beginning to turn. Santa seemed to have entered an almost trance-like state. His words were calm and measured. What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. I'm wondering if if they're trying to communicate with Akane via simply the perception of her existing, right? If they don't know that she died and she presumably is alive via some other means, whether it's Alice's body with memories or someone literally dressed to look like her, I don't know. Um, and they act like her, like she is real. Um, maybe the idea is that such a thing could come into existence, maybe? Shout out to um, <laughs> the Bunny Senpai anime. <laughs> the Morphogenetic Field Theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. There were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. Ah, I had misremembered the roles. <laughs> the nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morpho morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. The transmitters were putting in, or were put in building Q. And the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but... But there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in building Q. However... For some reason, she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. This is good to know, but it's also something I never could have predicted. I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where... what is going? Don't play dumb. 
<laughs> you know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? So. Who is transmitting in these in this case? Is it that Ace is some miraculous transmitter and Junpei is just a receiver? Is that the case? But maybe other people aren't necessarily as in tune? Because all I can think of is if someone else in the current... Like if you're getting more genetic field of your own thoughts, of your own deductions, it shouldn't be from the alternate timelines, it would have to be some past event. And clearly, these events would not have happened in this timeline in the past. So I think they would have to be transmitted by someone involved with these events, right? And what about the coffin snake was trapped in? How the heck did you open it? Again, I still this one moment in particular, I still am not sure I, I buy that he got that thought from his alternate timeline, unless, I don't know, someone had the exact same thought nine years ago. Well, that's, the answer to that is easy. He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the Morphic field set. Hang on a second, did this just like, Get super meta? Who is I? <laughs> Who is I right now? He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the Morphic Field set. Who is I right now? Who is I right now, guys? I feel like it's going to be June. I feel like it, but I don't know. Is it going to be like the player or something like that? It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures then? Okay, alternate futures. That's, that's, all right, let's talk about it. Imagine a river that splits in two like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river's source, in the past, will never know about those downstream, in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. Interesting twist as it may be, it does frustrate me a little bit that out of nowhere, at the very end, the, the linchpin, pinning together some of the discrepancies I've had with using the morphogenetic field as a means of determining who can get information how, is I'm an exception to the morphogenetic field, as described throughout the entire 39 hours I've played this game up until this point. <laughs> um, we still need to figure out who I is. Um, I think this is Junpei from another timeline, or some, you know, omnipotent Junpei. It's, it's admittedly a little frustrating that it comes out as, I'm an exception to the typical morphic field set. as like the means of fitting the alternate timeline information into this schematic. But that's... It's okay, we'll, we'll work with it. I know what happens on either fork of the river even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Yeah, so this I is probably another Junpei. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. <laughs> I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I'm also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero? 
I mean, is this gonna be like a square root of negative one imaginary number? Is that what it's going to be? I'm not really zero, not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Is this to imply that Junpei eventually becomes zero? Is this like a, a future zero? <sighs> Whoa. Is this like Junpei eventually becomes zero and then via the morphic field set is able to send information back to Santa who sets up this nonary game, etc.? Maybe? Question mark? Something like that? Zero is my future. Okay, yep, that really spelling it out. In nine years, I will be zero. Wow. That... That... is something. Can I switch? No, I can't. Where did she go? June. Did she go to the future or something? Okay, so, so the whole big twist here is that Junpei is zero, and zero is actually in the future, and sending information backwards in time, and zero is partially able to do so because zero is an exception to the standard morphogenetic field theory we've been under the impression of up until this point and is able to have knowledge of alternative timelines, which obviously means that that's what Junpei is. So, Junpei is zero. And Zero of the Future has been telling Santa how to set up the events for this nonary game. And it's partially for revenge for what happened nine years ago, on behalf of both potentially Santa and Junpei, but also an attempt to bring back Akane, right? And so future knowledge, zero, knowing alternate timelines, all that jazz, has deemed this a means of bringing her back, is I think what we're going to talk about. June. No. Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Santa! Wise Clover! Oh, crap. Ugokuna. Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Uh-oh... Uh-oh, I guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Date. Get up. Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks... drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any number doors with just two people. What the heck is he thinking? I mean, if his bracelet is really zero, Ace has the one and the eight bracelets, potentially. Or no, just the one and the nine bracelet. Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. He says, Aitsuno Negai. So, like, that person's wish. So, it's not just a wish come true in general. It's He's referring to some specific person's wish coming true. Someone that has been referred to up until this point. I think it's going to be Future Zero's wish. That's it? That's all he's going to give us? What the heck does that even mean? Crap, they're out! Wait, how'd he get through the door? And now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. Hang on, how... How did he get out? Huh? They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be alright. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. Darn. Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. 
You mean we're trapped? So it would seem. Santa no yaro. Itte nani o takarande yagarinda. What the heck is Santa trying to do? Masaka. Oh my gosh, is it gonna be one last sort of? I don't know. Morphogenetic field moment. Nanda yo. Oh my gosh, what? Kono jokyo kara kangaete. Kore kara Santa ga okonau koto wa hitotsu shika nai daro. Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No, no, you can't be serious. Would he incinerate them? Why? Oh, but he is. Crap. We've got to do something. Maybe we can still get out through door nine. There is the red. <laughs> is this one more test of Junpei's receiving abilities or something? Yeah, all right, we can do this. I've just got to... No, it's not going to work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. I mean, their digital root is eight at the moment. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Wait a minute, but didn't we just see that it didn't work for Ace before? And somehow Santa got through there. There's something different about this red here. Sure, why not? I don't think I'm going to need them ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Huh. Ah, oh, man. She doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, no need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez. What the heck are you doing, Clover? Give me that. Alright, at least Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. All them combinations. So the only one is to leave Lotus behind, it seems. What? Then there's no other way? Lotus. What's interesting is, this is presumably the same total that Ace tried to get through with Lotus's bracelet and the Nine bracelet. Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. No, Lotus, no! No, we can't get rid of Lotus. Darn it, you idiot! Whoa, where the heck did that come from? Suddenly, suddenly Seven and Lotus are so friendly. Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, alright? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if there weren't bakas like you around, I'd be out of a job. Huh? <laughs> Love it. Seven's all like, it's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. This is going to be another morphogenetic field moment where we figure out some other means of getting out. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandoned you, did you? Well, I... You know, if it... If the incinerator starts up, it hopefully gives a warning, and when it cuts down to one minute, I'd be like, alright, you know what, save as many of us as we can, sorry Lotus. But until then, I'm down to find some other alternate solution. Yeah, I mean, that's that's cool. Girl, <laughs> 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 Bacchus. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. <laughs> that being said, however, Snake's like, alright, so, about this whole getting burnt alive thing. <laughs> However, I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? Okay, is he going to bring up my point about the acting funny and all that? Yeah, exactly. I trust you remember what happened to Ace? <laughs> I couldn't uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier, at the red. Oh, yeah. No. What is this? Why? 
Yeah, this door is clearly not functioning as it, as you would think. The question is, can we infer anything from Santa's most recent interaction with it, right? He had Santa and Ace. The zero bracelet and the one bracelet, and potentially the nine bracelet, meaning it's maybe a digital root of one, is all I can think of. <laughs> The digital root should be 9. It has to be 9. There's actually, when I saw this the first time, it was a little, little intense at the moment, so I didn't say so, but I'm subscribed on, on Reddit to a subreddit called r slash unexpected factorial, where people unintentionally end up putting factorials on uh, numbers, and I thought this would be funny given the exclamation points next to the 9. However, it's technically still correct, because 9 factorial is indeed a multiple of nine and would indeed have a digital root of nine so while completely unintended unexpected it was still funny enough actually still correct <laughs> then why why isn't it opening just to see why don't we give it a shot give it a shot yes that is what i said <laughs> Six, like, did I stutter? <laughs> yeah, give it a go. It's probably not gonna work. <laughs> you were right. It ain't opening. Hmm, but it did open nine years ago. The digital root was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Crap. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. Really. The walls are way too high. There's no way we could get to that hole seven popped out of nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at this door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. Is it? Akane Vision? Akane Vision, do you guys see that? Do you guys see that in the top right? Akane Vision, what? Akane Vision? It was Akane. So... Hold up a minute. I thought they were indicating that Junpei was zero. Obviously, as I'd mentioned before. I mean, this could be a different perspective, but I'm pretty confident this is the I. Um, could be like the all-seeing eye pun or something like that. But regardless, if Akane can see the alternative futures and stuff and eventually becomes Zero, and then maybe tries to save herself in a different timeline? In a past or something? Regardless, let, let's see what this does. Oh, we can't do that. All right. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. She was watching through Junpei's eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. She's like living through Junpei, it seems. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant and we were as one. I was him and at the same time, I was an observer. Oh man, guys. Oh man. Let's go back to that one time with the rabbits and everything. Is that what we're about to hear back? So if, if Akane is some, you know, incredible exception to the morphogenetic field theory and is able to perceive alternate timelines and eventually in the future of one of those timelines presumably becomes zero and then transmits to Santa to set this whole deal up to save herself potentially? But it seems like that contradicts what, well, no, it would make sense if Akane were resonant with Junpei because I thought Junpei was zero given the description of this eye being able to see alternate timelines and Junpei, you know, has that moment where he is able to get information from alternate timelines, not just from past events, right? But if Akane is simultaneously consciously resonant with him, which is 
another first, another exception, another new dealio that is cool and meaningful and an interesting twist, but still an exception and frustrates me for a little bit the same reason as before. Um, that still fits, but obviously it wouldn't have been deducible. Regardless, it started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. Wait, at the beginning of this nonary game? My resonant event melted into him, and we became one. Inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind, nine years in the future. So... So Akane died in the nonary game. And then at the beginning of this nonary game, with the bomb going off, the resonance between Junpei and Akane started. And Akane was in Junpei's mind. And that's how Junpei gets all this information during this nonary game. But why... Why was that the resonant event? Right? And all I can think of is, there's a future in which Akane lives, and is he aware of these alternate timelines in which he dies, etc. Discovers stuff about the morphogenetic field and resonance and all that jazz. And then sends that information back in time, or using, based on that information, devises a plan to set up this nonary game that we're currently playing through right now. And has Santa, in the past, be a means of setting that game up as an attempt to potentially... I guess, bring Akane back? If she's able to, you know, resonate with Junpei like this, I think the attempt might be to have resonance with some other body or something like that. But then why did she... why did she disappear? Other people have interacted with her, obviously. Regardless. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen, at the same time. Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. So I think, I think this is discussion of... <laughs> this is so much to sort through. I was under the impression that before, we were talking about Akane at the moment of her death or from the past, jumping nine hours in or nine years into the future for the resident of the beginning of this nonary game specifically. However, now it seems like Now it seems like it's the future zero slash Akane and the present as in the game that we're currently playing is what's being referred to. Regardless, however, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. <laughs> and now it seems back to my first impression. Come on, over here! She was living simultaneously through her experiences in the Nonary Project originally nine years ago, and then in the present via Junpei, it seems and knows that in the future she becomes zero? Or is it, it, or it could still be future, no, no, I was gonna say it still could be future Junpei who is resident with Akane becomes zero. But I think the idea is that Akane is zero in this case. Regardless, come on, over here. That was my brother Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Although, aren't there nine of them? So there should be eight other children, right? Come on, hurry up! We ran down a long, straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. A girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It has been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart, but just when all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. Hello, everyone. 
Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She's very important. Is it her ninth birthday and stuff? There's a whole paragraph coming, guys. Right now, she is over in building Q and is desperately trying to send information over to you. No, no, that's the Q. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hand were nine four leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her. <laughs> she doesn't know my goodness, that was quite the uh, paragraph. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is, well, it is difficult. My sister means a great deal to me, and I hoped that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. <laughs> Alright, take your seats, guys. Get your popcorn. Every one of you has a brother or sister in building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So, if you believe what I've told you and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now, don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before he was gone, we were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer, and opened several of the number doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. 
What are we going to do? There aren't any other doors? We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already. Emergency alert. Warning. Emergency, Warning. Emergency, emergency incineration. incineration. Automatic incineration. 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration. Yeah, no, don't worry. We don't need to give all that time. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother Aoi swallowed hard and answered. I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn? The plaque on the door says Incinerator. And that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes was filled with despair. Then, high up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent away from the incinerator and slid down into the hall. We came out on the other side of door 9. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door 9 before us, were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We'd left across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Wait, what, she got ahead of everyone? Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... <gasps> oh no, where is it? And she's like, the, the special treasure I received from Junpei. Did I drop Junpei-kun's present? I knew I'd had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, had I dropped it as we slid out? I had to go back. I had to! But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me. I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship. I hid in the shadows, and moments later I felt a rush of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back towards the stairs and freedom... The door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Gentaro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Yeah, ah, how wonderful, wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. 
No, stop, let go of me, let go. I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. Now that I'm thinking about it, is there like some external like consciousness of Akane, right? Like how is she simultaneously conscious in the present and in this all viewing, all experiencing Akane perspective, right? Is she always like that? I don't know. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, darn it. Do as I tell you. He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me. Somebody help me. Then, suddenly... Akane! The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt toward Hongo. You came back! I cried out. But then... Ha! You're too late, Baka! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number 9 door. Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother. His fists clenched. But those fists never reached Hongo. Shout out to that meme with the clenched fist, the Arthur meme. We need we need to get some Aoi uh, clenched fist memes going. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... The two other doors slid shut as well. Interesting. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. What? Then it started again. Warning. Warning, incineration, all that jazz. <laughs> Emergency incineration. Automatic incineration will take action. Now we're Junpei Vision. Now we're Junpei Vision. Incineration will begin 18 in minutes. 18 minutes. Now we're in Junpei Please Vision. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. So now we have we have Akane's consciousness from the previous Nonary game, living inside Junpei right now, able to switch back and forth between her past and this present, and I'm pretty confident that her ability to go back and forth between alternative timelines and all that stuff leads to her becoming zero in the future and setting up this project as well. Oh man, guys. <laughs> Holy crap. Man, I knew what it was going to say, but that is one heck of a creepy voice. I knew it. It's starting. Santa started the incinerator. I wonder if Junpei is aware of the Akane within him, or was that simply to the player? I think it was to the player. Crap. Man, I never thought I'd hear that voice again after nine years. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? What in God's name are you talking about? <laughs> 
it's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of experiment? You aren't making any sense. I mean, yeah, Lotus is kind of out of loop here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in... 17 minutes. Not a lot of time. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn. <laughs> what kind of an idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. She's like, I know that much English. Well... Darn it, okay, okay, fine. I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. <laughs> what? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing. <clears throat> ship, ship, ship? Question mark? How the heck? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the heck do you know? <laughs> because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. Wait, the floor is moving? What is that? What else can I say about it, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, what the heck is that? Akane Vision? W what is that? So, Akane was presented with this as well in the past. What else could I say? The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least, it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me. But I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off, even as more took their place, and forced myself forward. Is this some sort of final puzzle? Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. Aw, oh, poor Akane. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. Oh man, all I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, alright? Everything's gonna be okay. Ugh, man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. Alright, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's gotta be important. But what the heck am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey, move! <laughs> hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people around. I mean, to be fair, when it comes to a computer, a keyboard, etc., she's probably the most well-equipped to deal with it. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. This is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... Huh, well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. It's got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across a 5x5 five five grid. The numbers range from 1 to 8. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle... The incinerator will stop? Yeah, well, we can hope, right? Alright, puzzle, how do you work? Aw oh, man, that voice again. Incineration will begin in 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Junpei-kun had been gone for a while. Her connection to Junpei-kun had been gone for a while. Interesting. Oh, so does that mean Junpei was in Building Q? Junpei was in Building Q, 
and transmitting to Akane, who was receiving on the Gigantic. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening, evil face. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Aw, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> His laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person, I hate you! Oh my, how would you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I don't know about that. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see, I've even left you a way out. Uh, a way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You only capture me and make me do all this again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Hmm. Interesting. If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will, will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Interesting. Right now, there are two numbers in the red. The first is one and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face on my bracelet showed a five. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. Oh no. Oh no, she's gonna try it, pull the lever, and then it's not going to be verified. And then the question is, oh wait, Ace threw the... He threw the bracelets on the ground, right? So they should still be accessible to her. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hongo's muffled voice from across the room. I already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? I'm curious as to why in the alternate timeline where the incinerator went off, this puzzle didn't show up. Why? Why are you doing this? Hmm. You can never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now start the experiment! Solve the puzzle! I can't, I don't know how. 
Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't. Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. It's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. Dang. Ice Ace is really cracked. I imagine it will be very painful. All that laughing, though. His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will start in... Incineration will begin in... Ten minutes. Not a lot of time. I was crying. Great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow, I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the monitor. I can't. I just can't. There's no... no way. I can't figure this out. What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating, and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest, as if it would pound itself to pieces. Oh my goodness. We have one more puzzle to solve. As Akane in the past to transmit or something to the future? I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Junpei-kun had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me, Junpei-kun. Help me. Help me. Is, is the whole point to have Akane, who can tap into future information, have Akane in the past tap into Junpei-kun of the future solving this puzzle, to have Akane survive in the past, and Junpei in the present survive? Oh man, so there's like, <laughs> there's a lot going on here, guys. I'm gonna have to really sort through all of the uh, the timeline shenanigans, right? And the time paradoxes and all that. But the idea here is there is a timeline in which Akane dies. There's a timeline in which Akane survives and becomes zero. And then via becoming zero, or maybe doesn't survive, but lives on through Junpei as some sort of resonance or something like that. I'm not entirely sure becomes Zero, and then sets up the Nonary game that Junpei is currently going through as partially for revenge, but also so that Junpei can transmit to the morphogenetic field the solution to this puzzle so that past Akane can, tr can tap into the morphogenetic field and get that solution to survive. And I'm sure somehow all of those time paradoxes are going to iron themselves out, because if Akane in the past is survive, survives, there's no, you know, death to avenge, there's no notary game project, there's all that, all that jazz, so, well, we'll probably figure that out later on, hopefully. Help me, help me, help me. Junpei-kun. Junpei-kun. Please. Help me. Whoa. Akane! Akane? Akane Who the heck is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the heck up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea though. Clover's looking at me. And I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here. Akane! 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 Akane, Akane, can you hear me? Akane, say something! I feel like the Akane projection or whatever we were interacting with died when the previous Akane, or like the past Akane died, you know? Crap! Did something break our connection? I swear I just heard her. Crap! Akane! 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 Junpei-kun! 
Oh my goodness, guys, this is so nuts. This is so nuts, but it's so hype. <laughs> Junpei Kun. I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Junpei Kun. Junpei Kun. I screamed as loud as I could. Akane. Akane. Junpei Kun. Junpei Kun. It's so cool how they're doing this. <laughs> That's her. She's there. Then, that means. Akane. Akane. Akane, are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am. How, how did you know? I couldn't believe that he knew that. Now I understand what Santa meant. Right, there's only one way to help her. Wow. You were brought here to help my sister, to save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will start in... Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. Seven minutes. That's not a lot of time, guys. That's not a lot of time. Better start working on this puzzle, all right? Junpei, we don't have time. As quickly as I could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it. And I do. And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all this means. I know why the Nonary game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane! I, I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero. Yeah. Zero is... Kuroski Akane. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan. Yeah, I really want to figure out how, in what timeline or what whatnot, she ends up actually making it to the point of being zero and how she does that, right? That's still kind of like a, a gray area for me, but I will save her. I will save Kuroshiki Akane. I must save her, no matter what. Incineration will start in... Incineration will begin in... Six, six minutes. minutes. The voice reminded me of how much time I had left. Junpei Kun. Junpei Kun. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Just hang on, alright? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, alright? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. Alright, time to get to work, Junpei. Is Snake talking to them about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way! Hey, what are you... <laughs> Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus, I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over the screen. I think the panels are out of order. So I just need to switch these out. Staring at it isn't going to accomplish anything. I'll just have to try. Think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. Oh man, oh baby, this is so hype. I'm so excited. Is it just this is the question, right? So this one is clearly, um, you know, stuck. What letters do we have? Oh, so I can do that. And there's no back button, and there's no save function either. That is kind of problematic, because I need to go soon. Well, I guess I'm on a time limit myself. Let's see what we can do. Um, what letters do we have? A, A, S, P, 
R W D. O D. No, we have two S's. Password. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> so. So what? So we can probably like switch these out for the time being. Um. And do that. Where's the R? Cool. We did it. <laughs> Success. That was a lot quicker than anticipated. Please enter password. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up a minute. What was the number? I don't remember what the number was. Huh? Wait, wait a minute. What's the password? Was I supposed to be looking at the numbers? Am I supposed to remember that now? I have no idea what it is. Like... It's not password, is it? <laughs> password? I'm inputting a password now, then? Are there any hints? What the heck am I supposed to put here? Are there any hints? Um... What was that number? I forget what the, like, number we input to open the coffin was. I don't know, 1314HKUT, whatever it is. I feel like we're gonna eventually get more text from, uh, Junpei if I continue like this. I don't know, the screen appeared after I solved the last puzzle. Maybe the hint was in that one. Exactly! But I can't take a look at it! Can I go back and take a look? I, I want to go back and see what the number was there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Right? The puzzle. The answer ended up being pa password, and after it was an extra space. The ninth square. Maybe that's the password. Password nine? I feel like that doesn't... Password and then a blank space. Some nine letter, some nine character password. I only have eight characters to work with. Of course, I don't remember what the what the numbers were. Puzzle. I solved it by making the hint squares all nine. Is that the case? I just replaced the numbers with the letters that would make the bottom password. I solved it by making the hint squares all nine. I, is that the case? I didn't even see a hint square. So the hidden number should be nine as well. That means... What does it mean? I don't know what it means! I have no idea what that means. It's all just nines. The number after password on the puzzle screen is nine. Correct. Then the password this thing is asking for, I should input. I swear it's just the order of the numbers from the previous screen. Am I literally gonna have to stop recording my footage, go back and look at the footage to see what the numbers were? Because that, that seems like what it's going to be. One was not the first one. The number after password on the puzzle screen is nine. The password this thing is asking for, I should input. Can I seriously not go back and look? If that's necessary, why the heck is this going on? You've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. 
Um, I don't know. Is it just gonna give me that hint over and over? I should input. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm really gonna have to tab out of the game, end my recording, save all the files and everything, wait for that to happen, probably leave my computer for a couple hours because we're having a house showing, and come back in a couple hours, review the footage, see what the numbers were, and then put that in and break this whole sequence up. That's kind of ridiculous. Well, regardless, I'm gonna say that we'll, well, I don't know. I want to have this all be one continuous thing. Alright, I'm going to pause here and know that on your guys' end, it's probably going to be one continuous super long episode just because, you know, finale hype. And I'm pretty confident this is the finale. Um, but on my end, I'm going to have to interrupt things a bit. So I hope you guys understand. Holy cow, I am super hyped right now. Um, I Like I've mentioned before, a couple of like the, the plot twists, etc. were, you know, I'm the exception to the rule, which is not which is a plot twist that I'm not a big fan of. But in general, they are still hype plot twists. They're really cool. They add a lot to different characters. It provides a whole different perspective on things. And um, it's it's just super hype in general. And it's got me incredibly curious to figure out what's going to happen as a result and to hear a lot of your guys' thoughts and ask questions about it and um, all that jazz. I sound like I'm ending the episode. I'm giving some thoughts before I continue on, I guess. I'll see you guys in just a minute. All right, so it's been a couple hours, a couple really stressful hours actually. I had to replay the game up until this point and some other stuff went down that has unfortunately taken away from my mood. I'm trying to re regain the hype that I had going into this puzzle and everything. And I'm obviously backwards a bit, right? And what I wanted to do was take a look at the numbers, right? To see if there was anything I could actually do with them, right? But obviously there are way more than eight. And the other thing I was thinking of was, I really just don't know what happens when I do that. And all these nines flash. And so, what I think is actually going on, is they literally just want a one character password, which is the number nine. I think that's what they're going for. Also, real quick, as I was mashing my way through the story up until this point, I saw a line, it was that nine years ago, she recreated the history of her of a future she got a glance of or something like that that is something i'm having a really difficult time getting my head around is it this akane saw a future somehow and then in an alternate timeline tried to rebuild that maybe i don't know are there like multiple akane i guess like consciousnesses that's or there's like one Akane conscience that's like, or consciousness that's in line or tied to all of the various alternate timeline Akanes that she can like focus in on one versus the other and so she's like manipulating multiple Akanes in time and potentially multiple Junpeis if she's resonating with them. That's something I'm trying to get my head around a little bit but for the time being, let's see if this works. <laughs> of course. Of course. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 equals 8. This is true. But, yeah, that's correct, so, yes, that's it. Akane, did you get it? <laughs> yes. I did. I solved it. I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did. Now I just have to press enter. Here we go. <laughs> then what the heck are you waiting for? Push it. Okay, I will. Oh man, here we go, guys. I hit the enter key. Hey, emergency shutdown command has been confirmed. Incineration system has been disabled. We did it, guys! We saved her! At least from this threat. Who knows what's to come now? 
。純平君。It worked. It worked. The incinerator shut down. It worked. Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I'd had left disappeared, and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, laughing and crying, and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Aww. Aw, Akane. And now what's going on on this end, right? Whew. I can't quite believe I did that. But I'm so glad. So glad. I, I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of stuff. I need to tell Akane. Akane, Sma! Akane, sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course, that's fine. I love how they're just like chatting like they're literally on the phone right now. I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now, well, Seven and Lotus didn't, don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Junpei, Omae. Junpei, are, are you? Okay. <laughs> oh, shut it. Right, okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? Alright, nothing holding me back now. Here it goes. Wait. Incineration will begin in 90 seconds. Huh? Why is it different this time? Yikes. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. Cue the emergency music. What the heck? Why isn't it stopping? It stopped in the past. Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. And again. And again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the heck is going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the heck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin in 60 seconds. Yo, 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 guys, you gotta do something real fast. I feel like the difference might be that, uh, what, what is gonna happen here? Wait, of course, does he have to access Akane again or something like that? That's what the numbers that showed up after the puzzle mean. Do they need all four of them to go for it now, or was it just that two plus four plus five plus seven? Oh, not equals eight. Why did I say that? Plus eight. So now they need to use all their bracelets. Snake, Clover, me, seven, and Lotus. Then door nine. No, that's it. That number on the door isn't a nine. It's a six. It's not even a number. <laughs> It is hidden, but an exit can be found. It's a Q, maybe? Seek a way out, seek a door that... Yep. Holy crap. Of course. That's really funny. So, for those of you that are wondering, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Q. There we just have to put the right number into the red and... Yeah, I think... So the idea here is... In Japanese, the number 9 is Q, and obviously in English, the letter Q is pronounced Q. So if you were to say Q in Japanese, it could be like katakana for the English letter Q, not just the number 9. Wow, that is quite the, the pun there. <laughs> and of course, what is the number Q? I think O was 24, right? So that would make Q 26. Which would mean it would be a um, number eight, right? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Run, guys, get to the door, run! Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, don't have much time! Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or are we all screwed? Alright, no time to explain, just go! Quick, verify your numbers on the red! Verify? Who? 
What combination? All of us, we all need to verify. Why? <laughs> you really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Hurry, 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 hurry. Incineration will begin in... 10 seconds? Oh man, oh man guys, come on! Verify faster! Okay, it's like one per second, okay. And pull the lever! Pull the lever! Get out of there, man! Central gate has been opened. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it was actually the number 26 via the letter Q. Oh, thank Christ. No, no time to be happy. Time to go. <laughs> Hurry, we've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go. Come on, guys, move it. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. Wow. <laughs> you found it. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. Wow. How tense. How tense of a situation. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> Snake is shaking his head wearily. I just want to take a nap, but... Akane! Akane! Akane, can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But nothing. It's probably because he's no longer in danger. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Akane! Aoi! I cried his name, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming, and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! Akane! <clears throat> Akane! I buried my face in his chest, and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go, and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I'd passed through the door, my bracelets had begun the countdown to death. I leapt away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to you and scan all the bracelets I left. Or I left the ones Hongo had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. Ah. I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we'd call Seven in Nine Years and Snake the Blind Boy were looking at me. <clears throat> they seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide, and their mouths hung open. Alright, let's get out of here. We don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Oh, he was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise, and they nodded. We took off running, up the spiraling stairs to freedom. Time for more running. I'm still trying to figure out if they're like in the same timeline, just ones in the past and ones in the future, if they're alternate timelines. How many, in how many timelines is this exact sequence of events currently occurring, right? Um, there's, there's a lot going on with like time paradoxes and all that stuff that I'm trying to sort out of my head, but for the time being, 
it's really cool that we've supposedly saved Akane in the past, and thus made her exist potentially in the future via Akane's ability to see alternate timelines and then communicate information to the past, not just to the future, I guess. But if they can get us out of here, no, ma no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh? Is Seven talking? <laughs> hey, Junpei, can I ask you something? What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why did it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Yep, uh, that makes our digital route eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah, what are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base 10? That goes from 0 to 9, right? Then how about base 16? 0 to F. After 9, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. Yes, don't worry, Junpei. We have the explanation of bases down. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? Yep. What if you go way past base 16, all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. They're really spelling it out. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. Of all things to spell out, it shouldn't be this. It should be all the time stuff going on. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19, K is 20, L is 21, M is 22, N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and what comes after that? And <laughs> they both realize. Q! 26! And what does that mean? That wasn't a 9 on the door. <laughs> it was a Q! A lowercase Q! Yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way. You could say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. I don't think you could say that it was a 9 in base 10. It looks like a 9, but... I think there's something up with the translation here. Time for more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for air. Darn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many more of these steps left. Let's run. Run like a bullet down a rifled barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I think, actually, interestingly enough, the rifled barrel uh, analogy is pretty um, accurate given they're going down like a spiral uh, or going up a spiral staircase, right? Because I'm pretty sure that bullets are spun to a degree within down the barrel of... Uh, of a rifle. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant, coiled dragon. Finally! <laughs> G. 
Jesus, I can barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. Hiraksu. All right. I'm going to open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here. Please. Please do. Sure. You look like a big, heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're going to open. And you're going to open now. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small reassuring squeeze. I was so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective all nine of us who had been kidnapped. We're finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over, Aoi whispered. Yeah, it was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue to what would happen in nine years, exactly. Yet at the same time, isn't a different ending to this event the prologue to what actually happens in nine years? Yes, finally, air! Darn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh, I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You've got to be kidding me. What? It can't be. Are they in Nevada or something? This is... Yeah. Oh, man. Ha! <laughs> wow. Nevada This is the building in the Nevada desert. The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time, we were in building Q. Sure enough, that's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right. Our, our bracelets. I guess I've never really gotten a good look at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip. Like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Akane. Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. So is that... I, I feel like that's gonna be the end, guys. Yeah, and so here come the credits. Wow. Wow. So many thoughts. So they were in that building the whole time, which I guess fits with the whole transmitting analogy. What's going on with Alice, though? What's going on with Alice, guys? All eyes? June disappearing in, in the incinerator? What's going on with that? Still so many questions. I, um, I think I got the gist of it, right? So they obviously showed that morphogenic fields exist, they talk about the different theory, etc. They talk about Akane being an exception. They mention that she's able to see alternate timelines, not just, um, I don't know, provide information to a morphogenetic field. There are certain people that can 
tap into morphogenic field and draw information from previous experiences and there are certain people that can through their experiences transmit information to the morphogenetic field for other people to draw from right and so in a sense people that are receiving information could only gain information from things that have already been experienced in the past however akane is an exception right and so i believe she's able to send information to the future slash see alternate timelines alternate futures and so i think the idea here is that in a timeline she becomes zero and then devises a means to keep herself alive and that leads to the development of the game that we just played which then aww Ooh, i'm excited to see what's going on here there's june akane really Anything after the credits? Those were short credits. Like, really short credits. There is! Exciting. Are you... okay? Aw, oh, come on. This is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. <laughs> It was just before the end of elementary school. Junpei-kun and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill, looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. <laughs> um, well... <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure it was something along the lines of like, you look like there was a takoyaki that got hit by a takoyaki beam, and then there was just like a cloud of growing takoyakis or whatnot. I want to back and listen. Obviously, that might not translate to a Western audience, so here's the, uh, you know, Western translation, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. Looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. Doesn't quite capture the same uh, silliness, but <laughs> what does that even mean? Junpei grinned and... Ow! 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 See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat fifth or you can't beat five eighth graders, Junpei Kun. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing has a pretty smooth ride. Sure was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Yeah, clearly, you know, there's someone who had set up all this, right? Santa. Santa was, you know, setting all these things up, arguably. We don't know if Akane exists in this timeline. Probably not, but... Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in and now here we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. I still can't believe we let her drive. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! This is so fun! <laughs> there's, this is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around! And there's no speed limit! Hey, Clover! Watch those bumps, alright? <laughs> this car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. <laughs> hey, shut it. Can't help it if I'm big, alright? Suck it up. Why don't you drive, Seven? <laughs> I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. <laughs> oh heck no! There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <laughs> oh, why do you? Why are you so entitled to the passenger seat, Lotus? And Clover, there's no need to slow down. Yeah, 
The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. What? What? Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. Huh? There's no doubt about it. I mean, well, obviously, if June is zero, but is she zero, like, in this present? How would she, like, disappear? I don't... I'm confused. <laughs> then we've got to hurry if we want to catch him, don't we? Sure thing. Oh, crap. Darn, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even think a car like this could go this fast. We're sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we'd run into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. Ugh, oh, you've got to be kidding me. They were probably the people that were responsible for the, uh, like, rabbits, right? Or the bunnies. The moment we saw what they were doing, Junpei-kun ran up to them furious. Oi, what are you doing? Hey, what the heck are you doing? Then he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me, officer, please, you have to come with me. The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Junpei-kun, sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big, swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I guess I could've. Then, why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty? Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester, remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told him. <laughs> then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did the rabbits. I couldn't forgive him for that. So, I... Hey, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Hongo Gentaro. Why did he create the Nonari project? Anybody? Any ideas? <laughs> Is he still alive? Hmm? Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. <laughs> He's still in the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. Fitting. His eyes just look empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, are you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old baka. <laughs> Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I... I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you can understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? 
Yes, if you want to put it simply. But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness. I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the tape to go back on. <laughs> Alright. So what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well... See, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic... I kept going after Hongo on my own, hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. During the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. Yep, you're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <laughs> what do you have to say, Ace? Sounds like Hongo has something to say. Alright, fine, I'll e-talk, but you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar or peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Mandragora, with the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create soap Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Crap, this is gonna go on forever. Tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. So is is Akane alive in the the present, right? Like, here, this is for you. What's this? Is it gonna be the doll? This is a for you doll. His name is J Junpei. Oh, that's really cute. Junpei pulled something out of his pocket and shoved out his arm toward me. So this is before the Notary Project in the uh, Akane timeline. Junpei-kun, are you sure it's a uh, for you doll? Huh? Yeah, the lady at the shop said so. Uh, that means it's for you, right? <laughs> I, um, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? <laughs> what? That's, uh, oh, oh man, oh man. <laughs> oh, well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? <laughs> Yeah, I guess calling it Junpei-kun isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well... Um, you know how after June we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean... We're gonna be in different schools, and... 
I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Uh... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June then? Aw, that's why she's called June. Uh, okay, that's really cute. So I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> yes, I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I. Aww, so I give this hit me. So we always together. Oh, Junpei-kun.何か困った時、これ握りしめて、これ。これ。いつでもどこでも駆けつけるだから。ほら。もっていけ。If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Junpei-kun. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto Jun's tiny yarn body. Oh, Junpei-kun. I'll never forget you. I promise. Junpei looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. Shout out to the Tyndall effect. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Nakane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic. But she's still alive now. As June. Is she still alive? She dis Last I heard, she disappeared in the incinerator. Did she come back or something? But how? Was it because I tapped in the morphic field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. Alright, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense. He's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. But Seven... He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or, wait, maybe that's not it at all. There is one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? You look satisfied. No. No way. He couldn't. Did Seven lie about Akane dying? I'm not... I don't feel like I'm getting hit by a truck, like, I feel like this twist is about to indicate. Hey, look, over there, there's somebody next to the road. Huh? <laughs> what? Hmm? Who's next to the road? Oh! Ahem. <clears throat> so that's Alice. Presumably. Hitchhiking. What? The burning gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on that shimmering plain was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It would not be long before Junpei realized who she was. Great, we're not going to get our questions answered. So 
So guys, it looks like... It looks like that's... The end. Would you like to save the info you obtained during this playthrough? After saving the game, we'll restart from the beginning. Please select the save slot. Naturally, we're going to move on to the next save slot because that's how uh, things work. Wow. So there, there you have it, guys. There you have it. That's all of 999. I'm, I think what I'll do is play the ending again. <laughs> while I talk about my thoughts on the game and everything. Um, so here's the ending again, obviously. I I don't know what to think because I'm still a little bit confused too about the whole time thing. Apparently Junpei comes up with one way that it makes sense. It has something to do with Seven lying or telling the truth about what he remembered. And that's regarding potentially Akane's body or potentially um, Alice. I think we're gonna get something going on, some weird thing going on with Alice and uh, obviously the whole story with Alice, the never melting girl, all that jazz is, if that is true, then there, that opens up a lot of doors to how Akane could have not existed and then now exists. Regarding the whole her becoming zero thing, I think that'll intentionally, that was intentionally left out and will be solved in a future game potentially because I just, um, I'll, I'll turn this on auto for the sake of it. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I'm still not able to put together, really, how there is at least, I guess there's at least one Akane that lives on in a future to become Zero. And then as Zero is able to send info to Sa Santa, who sets up all of the, I don't know, um, nonary game, like right now, to get Junpei into that position to transmit to past Akane, who has set it up so that she's resonating with Junpei because that's what, um, what's it called? Oh, that was the wrong button. Um, <sighs> because Akane from the past was resonating with. Junpei in the present of the game that explains why he was able to know so many things etc from alternate timelines because Akane is able to see alternate timelines not necessarily Junpei and then is able to save Akane in that timeline the question then is if the thing is like if Akane weren't if Akane were saved and survived the whole impetus for Akane becoming zero and the nonary game that we just played through completely disappears and so they have to be in alternate timelines. But then the question is, how in how many timelines is something like this occurring? And maybe, why does Akane, you know, care about this one in particular? And if she's able to, at will, kind of take upon the consciousness of various versions of herself, why not just focus on the ones she lives in? I'm, I'm a little bit confused by that sort of argument or, or aspect of the whole timeline stuff. But I think I'm maybe just thinking beyond what I really need to. And I think I'll just settle at taking it for what it is. And there are questions that will be answered in future games, I'm sure. There's also plenty more that I'm sure I don't know. Uh, there were a couple times where they explained things and then they ended, include, you know, indicated that there's an exception to this rule. And they introduced new concepts. And clearly the physics of this world are different from that of my own. So I can't completely infer what's going on, um, especially given Alice is around now. So I, I don't really know 100%, and I feel like I'm not 100% satisfied because I don't have those answers, and I think that's probably intentional, knowing that there's a sequel to this game. Overall, my thoughts on the game. I really liked it. I think it started a bit more slowly than I would have liked, but overall... Um, overall, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It definitely ramps up towards the ending, and I think the true ending is, is incredible. It's a great experience going through the true ending. The various endings, the other endings were really cool too. I really like the Clover ending. That's probably my other favorite, I guess, and that's probably not surprising to those of you that have seen all of my other Let's Plays. And most of them are pretty good. You can really kind of put them together in uh, retrospect when you see a lot of the other things that happen in alternate timelines. 
Again, June is still really confusing. Akane is still really confusing. What's going on with her buddy disappearing in the incinerator and then suddenly being alive for this ending, etc. But, uh... Yeah, I do think they tie up some things pretty well. I think regarding the morphogenetic field, obviously that's been a point of contention throughout the entire playthrough. But... Also, I should probably do something better. Um... You look satisfied. No, no way. He couldn't. I'm still so confused by that. Right? Like, no, no way. He couldn't. He looks oddly satisfied based on lying about it. Like, what is going on with that? I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um... But, yeah, I think with the morphogenetic field, when they first introduce it, you're not sure if it's an analogy for certain things going on. You think it's odd that all the people in the on the ship already know something about it and have these analogies for things. But something like the morphogenetic field specifically, they mention it a couple times. They mention experiments on it. And it doesn't. it's probably not something that exists. I can't confirm it doesn't exist, but I also highly doubt it does. Um, and so, as a person playing in what appears to be a normal, like our world, world, uh, it's a little bit difficult to buy into the fact that maybe they're introducing the morphogenic field and, and bringing it up a couple times to suggest that maybe it actually exists in the in-game universe and is something we should be considering when deducing things, figuring out how people might be interacting with one another, how people might be finding things out, etc. Um, or you consider it as an analogy, and we're supposed to take away some sort of point to describe how we're looking at the nonary game itself, right? Um, as more of like a metaphor. And so that confusion was a point of contention, especially earlier on, before we essentially confirm when Junpei gets that initial epiphany about the opening the coffin. I think up until that point, it was kind of a point of contention as to whether or not the morphogenetic field is simply an analogy, some, simply something of interest, or something act that actually exists, or simply a plot device, because up to a certain point, it didn't matter whether or not the morphogenetic field actually existed, right? Up until Junpei actually needed the morphogenetic field, the morphogenetic field was simply a plot device that gave motive to characters to start the Nonary Project many years ago, to investigate these things, which then leads to, you know, the Nonary game, right? So... Up until then, it wasn't. It didn't even matter that it was specifically the morphogenetic field. Um, and then, of course, after that point, it becomes an incredible plot device and something that is confirmed to exist in this world, and then is you know essential to the story. And at that point, I mean, sure, once it's thrown in there with in-game physics, the the viewer, the player, is allowed to relax a bit in their seat and say, "There's only so much they can um, infer given the the rules they know about this world." And then, of course. Um, a couple other points of contention are the plot twists being exception to, exceptions to those rules, which are already exceptions to, you know, physics that as in our real world as we know, right? So, um, yeah, the plot twists, really cool, really cool stuff. Um, the story is really cool. I really enjoyed watching it unfold and getting to play a role in its unfolding. And um, like I said, I think the plot twists while a little bit frustrating in that they're exceptions to the rules, so they never could have been predicted in a traditional sense, unless there's a morphogenetic field, right? <laughs> uh, and that's something I like to be able to do. I like to at least be able to infer what I can um, reasonably uh, beforehand, and there's no way I would have ex anticipated like such an exception within the rules presented to me, right? That aside, I mean, they are really cool things, right? Like the fact that Akane is an exception to this rule, her ability to see, perceive different timelines, her ability to resonate with Junpei, these are all really cool things that make for a really intriguing story and um, really make for an, in, for an exciting ending. So I really enjoyed it in that regard. The characters are awesome. They take a while, I think, to grow on you. I didn't feel too particularly attached to them until around the first ending, probably, or when Junpei was pretty close to Clover in our first ending timeline or whatever. So, it did take a while for me to actually feel very attached to the characters, but I do think they are solid characters. And walking out of it, I don't think there's any character I'd consider super weak amongst the main cast, right? Um, I think they're all doing a great job. As far as my favorite characters, it's tough because... <laughs> it's tough because they're all so different. Coming out of it, I would say 
Junpei and Jun are certainly some of the most interesting characters, but are they my favorite? Jun, up until the very ending of the game, was not very exciting. She's kind of like a cute love interest for Junpei, and was like adorable and sweet, but not too interesting, I guess, up until the end. And, I mean, so ending June is, like, really cool, especially given her roles in the story that only become, you know, you only become aware of at the very end, that she's zero, etc., even if you don't fully grasp them like myself. And Junpei himself is also pretty cool in a similar note, right? I like his heroics and everything. Seven is just such a genuinely good guy, although Junpei apparently thinks otherwise now. Um, and something more has going has been going on. Um, but I really liked his his role as a detective, his role in saving the children, his role as you know someone who just cares, right? A lot. Um, Lotus is really cool as well. She's a lot more than meets the eye. She's really smart, and I liked her sassiness uh, and you know her attitude and her intelligence and her seriousness when need when necessary. Clover is adorable as well, but also has that horror vibe because of that one ending. And um, she's really positive, but also really smart and dedicated. You could tell, you know, in a lot of the different timelines, she was really ahead of the game, figuring out a lot of these things behind the scenes, right? So she's also a great character. Snake is a character that is absent for a lot of the game, but is a rock when he is present. Also, obviously, very intelligent, but also a little bit more of a... I feel like he's a little bit more of a a plot device, a means of exposition than an actual personality a lot of the time. Um, so maybe he's not quite as strong. Still cool though. I still want to know why he was dressed up the way he was, but regardless, uh, Ace obviously is a well done character in my opinion. Has a lot to him. Obviously not very likable, but it's easy to say that he's a really good character. And Santa. Santa as well. Also a really cool character. Um, a lot to his backstory, his role in the original games, you know, his role now. And clearly a lot more to uncover too, given that he's been a pawn of Zero for so long, right? There's clearly some initial connection that was made and, and all that jazz. So, yeah. Um, I would say probably at the moment, maybe Seven and Clover... Seven and Clover are probably up there as some of my favorites. I would say Junpei is like heroics at the end and everything. I really like those heroics, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they're intrinsic to... They, they don't feel too strongly attached to Junpei himself. I don't know. Um, but there isn't really a character I dislike, which is, which is a great thing. So I think the characters were great. The music was awesome. The visuals, I think, were really well done, too. The art was always interesting to see. Sometimes the, the CG arts of characters, especially Santa, look quite a bit different from the sprites, which is a little bit, you know, staggering at times. But, but I think overall it's really well done. I was really excited every time we had more art to look at. The various endings are really cool. Um, the flow chart is really helpful. I think sometimes backtracking was a little bit difficult to get around. But overall, I really enjoyed it. The game went on a lot longer than I had anticipated, but I'm glad I played through it all. And I want to say thank you to all of you guys who, um, <laughs> let's see here. Can I find some better music to listen to in the background? There's got to be some better audio to have in the background. Maybe, who knows, I'll retroactively edit that sound effect out because... That's uh, something else. But what was I even talking about? No, I'm, I'm good on the whole saving thing. Yep, we're good. Can I just like go back to the main menu? <laughs> Can we just do that? Let's just, you know what, let's go here. The four and five doors. Way earlier in the game. Just get some nice background music though. So we're gonna skip ahead a moment. So, so Right. Cool. Let's get some of this music going. <laughs> so the soundtrack is excellent. Um, like I said, the art is really cool as well. It took a minute to get used to it at the beginning, but now I, you know, I really enjoy it. The puzzles, for the most part, weren't bad. 
but weren't always super enjoyable. Sometimes they were really easy and just felt like I was taking the time to go through the steps rather than actually figuring things out. Um, sometimes they were really awesome. I think it was like the cargo room, which was the one after the steam room, was was really cool. I really liked the puzzles in there. It truly felt like a puzzle. Um, sometimes they were downright frustrating. <laughs> But I think that's more of a translation error between DS and Steam than, than an intrinsic you know, difficulty with the puzzle itself. I think sometimes the plot jumped quite a bit and it was a little bit difficult to see some of the deductions that were being taken for, you know, law more or less as being reasonable deductions, but you kind of have to go with the flow for the sake of the story. So sometimes that was a little bit, you know, little took took me disconnected me from the story a little bit, but nevertheless, um, it was overall definitely quite enjoyable. The voice acting was really good. I, I liked that quite a bit. I obviously don't know what the English voice acting is like. Um, what else is there to talk about? Sequels. Um, oh, I was gonna thank people. Yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the entirety of this playthrough. Right, this like 47 episodes and like 40 something hours of gameplay on my end, and that's a that's a long journey. But it's it was a really good one, and I'm really thankful to those of you that stuck around with it, and th thank you to those of you that enriched the experience. Right, this game on its own is an excellent game to play. It's a great story to experience. But I think it's even better when you have a lot of people watching you. You have a lot of people offering little tips and tricks along the way. You have people guiding your experience to make sure, guiding your people who know your preferences, guiding your experience to make the most um, appeal to those preferences. And when you have people offering fun facts, when you have people reacting to your own reactions, right? It's funny to see when people get frustrated or are surprised by my ability to do something or are frustrated by me sitting there for so long or um, enjoy my stupid jokes sometimes, or whether it's a pun, or little tidbits that I offer information-wise as well. So, thank you guys so much for all of your comments, your support on the videos, and um, the discussion in, you know, HeroNet and everything. It makes a world of a difference. And especially, thank you to Caitlin, Ben, and um, JM. The, the three of you guys really made a huge difference in my playthrough. Uh, you guys were great resources. <laughs> for informing my playthrough, making sure I was able to do it the way I wanted to, and ensuring that there were no spoilers thrown around, and helping out with the different endings, and all that jazz, and understanding game mechanics. If there was any question, I knew I could rely on you guys to, to figure it out, so thank you guys so much for that. And regarding future games, yes, yes, I'll, I'll definitely play them. The, the second half of this game was more than enough to sell me on the rest of the series, honestly. Not to mention there have been some comments along the way that have indicated that the future games are even better, which I believe, because I really love Danganronpa 1, but I really love Danganronpa 2. So I'm I'm excited to play more games. As far as when they are, don't bother asking, because <laughs> there's so much more on the table that I want to get to as well, so I can't guarantee you when. But if you're interested in keeping track of that, uh, maybe mention it on Twitter. Or more importantly, uh, I'll talk about it on the Discord, which there's a or there's a link to in the description. Other stuff, I think that just about covers it. I really, really liked playing this game, even though it had its moments. It was definitely a great experience with some great characters, and I'm really excited to learn more about it. Whether that's just discussions about the story, you know, clarify a couple things I'm supposed to have gotten by the end point of this game or things that'll be clarified in future games. And again, thank you guys so much for your support. It it really made the experience as awesome as it turned out to be. And now I'm kind of sad that it's ending. I always get sad at the end of Let's Plays because Let's Plays are so, they're such a big part of my life and it's so fun to go through them. And yeah, it's sad that it's coming to an end. If there's bonus material, which I don't think there will be, um, that'll be uploaded as a bonus episode or something, but I really do think this is the conclusion of the Let's Play. So, thank you guys, and I guess if you like this, do check out my Danganronpa series. That is probably the, the thing that I've done that you will most enjoy if you liked this game. 
Other things I'd suggest checking out would be the Corpse Party series, and maybe stepping outside of your comfort zone and checking out like Luigi's Mansion, or some of my Pokemon videos, or Patron Pick episodes, or whatever it may be. But regardless, until the next series of mine, or the next video of mine, whichever it may be, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.